Hello! <laughs> the delay is real. Um, welcome. This is my first time sort of doing this. Uh, my husband is pointing at me <laughs> and trying to give me silent tips, which are unappreciated. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me to do? I'm saying if you notice the delay on that, you're freaking out. Just look at the other screen. Okay, okay. I'll look at the other screen. All right. Well, good day, everybody. Um, welcome to my first attempt at streaming virtual comic book lessons. I uh, have been teaching uh, mostly kids how to draw comics for about three years now, and I have a bit of a curriculum. Um, I have a curriculum for about seven classes, and then the rest I will be figuring out and expanding as I go. Uh, it'll be very easy to get into nitty gritty stuff and and uh, go into like character designs and specific uh, creatures and and different types of perspective. And I will potentially get myself lost in lessons. Um, yeah, today is going to be uh, about the very basics of drawing comics. Uh, anyone tuning in who has taken lessons with me before probably knows all of this because it's the first thing that I approach when I show anybody how to do comics. And let's just jump right into it. I'll go over to my other cam. Doo -doo. All right, so the first thing we need to know when we are drawing anything really, especially comics, are the four basic shapes. I should probably keep notes. Four basic shapes. Normally I do like a call and answer here, but no one is going to be audible to answer my questions. So the four basic shapes in, let's do two dimensions and three dimensions are squares. So in two dimensions, it's just a regular square. In three dimensions, it would be a cube. That's a very careful way to draw a cube, a simple way to draw a cube. Draw a square, you draw another square overlapping it, and then you join the corners that you want, and then I would go over it in my ink to make it look nice. Shape one. Another one are circles. So in two dimensions, it is a circle. In three dimensions, it is a sphere, which also looks very much like a circle it's hard to draw a sphere on paper sometimes unless you get into shading there's no like nice trick to it you just have to shade oh fun tip making sound effects helps with drawing a million percent don't let anyone tell you otherwise uh next one is going to be so the, the last two are the ones that I always find the kids that I teach get a little hung up on. Um, so one of them is a cylinder. How do you spell cylinder? Which doesn't really have a two-dimensional analog. It might look like a rectangle in two dimensions. You can't really draw it that way. In three dimensions, you have... An eclipse, or like a squished circle, parallel lines, and then the rounded edge on the bottom. And a really easy way to draw that is you draw two matching eclipses, and then you just connect them. And then we're going to erase one of the inner lines. I'm going to do it on the other side. And then I'm just going to go over that with my ink. Yes, I meant ellipse. Was I saying eclipse? Oh, oops. I meant ellipse. <laughs> I guess my husband is going to be the peanut gallery. And then the last one 
Um, what I normally find that kids, uh, when I teach kids, what they usually say is they immediately go to triangle. In, and in two dimensions, the last shape does look like a triangle. So it's really hard not to give it to people. But in, when you take that to three dimensions, most times people will tell me a pyramid, which is wrong. <laughs> that is not our basic shape. A pyramid is slightly more complicated. What I'm actually wanting is a cone. So a pyramid is just like a cone with flattened edges. And so we draw that by doing another ellipse, not, a, not an eclipse, and we add the cone shape on the bottom. And yeah, that's really it. When you know how to draw these things, you can, you can draw anything. Um, everything is either made up of those shapes or can be drawn in those shapes. So some examples. Um, I can see a chat box. So if people want to throw in things for me to draw, I can try to occasionally look at my chat box. But normally I like to go into character design at this point. So if we were doing a character, just some really simple characters with these shapes, we might do like a circle for the head and we could do a bit of a cone for the body. Give just little nubby legs because we don't need anything really complicated. And wacky inflatable arms, because who doesn't like wacky inflatable arms? And and a nice happy face. And I'll just go over that in ink again. Make it more visible for you guys. The nice thing about figuring out how to draw your shapes is that, well, that, the part that I like is that's how you really nail down your structure drawings. And once, once your structure drawings are done, you can just add details at leisure. So that was really quick. But if I was going to do a structure drawing for a person, Let's see, what's a character I like? Um, I have a character named Ossel in one of my comics that I draw. So when I draw him, I give him a head. He's got a big round body. He's got legs. I, I sort of just fake them in, but you can do them as... His legs are kind of cone-shaped. He might also do them as cylinders. He's got little feet. He's actually got three arms. So these circles here are just for reference for me. At this point, I would go in and start defining the shape of his body a little bit more. Make him a little more bulbous. Ooh, he's cute and plump. These circles kind of represent his three shoulders. And then he's going to have a cylinder for an arm that goes out. And then back to have a hand on his shoulder. And then just put the shoulder up little further and make him waving. So a cylinder that goes up and another cylinder that goes up. So we've got our um, upper arm and our forearm with our hand. I tend to draw a lot of non-human creatures, non-human characters, because if they don't look quite right, who would know? Like, <laughs> I think I'm funny. 
Oh, thank you, Peanut Gallery. Peanut Gallery thinks I'm funny. So we got another cylinder going out and back with some fingers coming around on his hip. Uh, normally I give him a complicated jacket, but I'm going to forgo that today. He's got a bit of a neck. We'll just slip that in there. Oh, there's tea being made. And then he's got a really big nose and four eyes. Those are his eyebrows. He's got an almost, it's an almost Simpsons aesthetic I'm going for this guy with his eyes specifically. And then, so that's all of his basic shapes an ear. At this point, I would then go in and finish adding details. So he needs some hair still. It just swoops. Swoopy, swoopy, swoop. Don't overthink hair. Like, that is one thing every how-to book has ever kind of told me. It's just don't overthink the hair. It's just swoops and lines you can get into like more precise things and doing uh curls and whatever but it all starts with nice loose swoops figuring stuff out uh, so that's his basic shapes all done and then i need to go in and add clothing because i don't know what this person looks like naked we don't want a naked person he does wear off-shoulder shirts, so he doesn't have to worry about his two arms on the one side. And he's usually wearing overalls, so we'll just throw those in there with a belt. And then he's got lots of packs. He's got, like, a Batman-esque utility belt, because he's a bit of a scavenger. Give him swoops for his really simple boots. Cameo of my husband's hand as he checks things. <laughs> And I think that is enough detail. Let's use my actual brush pen. Where I can then go in and start figuring out the rest. What did I draw? Oh, that's what I drew. So with my ink pen, I would go in. I normally, when I draw this guy in a comic, I use very static lines. But static lines meaning that it's a single line weight. I would use like my microns. So that all, it always looks the same. Regardless of how hard I let it push, whereas my, my brush pen, I can do a really thick line and then ease up on it and get a really thin line. And it's pretty cool. But for this guy right now, I love using my brush pen. I haven't been using my brush pen a lot lately. So I would like to use it more. Bare shoulder. Up. And up. Let's give him a bracelet just because. Yes. What are other things we can break down with simple shapes? 
other than life, universe, and everything. Armpit line. This is also their arm. Uh, when I'm done inking this guy, I will go into breaking down a hand really quick. So I have some quick tips for hands for basic shapes. Part of his shirt, his hand. Oh, excellent. I love it when people can see my tattoo. Here, there, get some really quick and lazy fold lines. I'm all about quick and lazy. There's no need to overthink your art. Make mistakes. If anything, make lots of mistakes. Because the more mistakes you make, the faster you will learn from them. So. Make mistakes faster. What was it that Thomas Edison did? Something like 4,000 versions of the electric bulb before he found the one solution. And no one thinks about the 4,000 other ones. Anyway, basic character. This is Ossel. I love him. Give him a little bit of ground to stand on. And a little bit of a shadow. Voila. Uh, what else? Hands. Hands are a big one that people sometimes get caught on. There are two ways that I like drawing hands. Uh, I start, we'll do realistic hands. We won't do, well, quote unquote realistic. We won't do like odd fingers because also had three fingers and a thumb. So we'll do regular four fingers and a thumb. I will start from, usually I will start from either a circle or a square. Um, just because some people have really circular hands, other people have really square hands. Mine are kind of, I think they're more circly. Always look at your own hands. You have references right here. Uh, thumbs, we do like a swoop out. And a swoop out for our thumb. That's a really big swoop. Swoop out for our thumbs. We can come up. There's a bit of a thumb. There's a bit of a thumb. For fingers, we're going to need one, two, three, four joints. One, two, three, four. And you can go through and meticulously do your one, two, three digits. Not digits, phalanges. Get all your phalanges in there. Or you could just kind of eyeball it. There's a hand. And the same on the other side. Even though we're starting with a square. Go in. One, two, three. Not gonna say those are the perfectest of hands, but they're pretty good. But they're good enough for jazz. Just throw some forearms out there. And the norm, if you want to really get into it, so we've got a crease there. Normally, there's a bit of a crease here, and a crease down. You can really get into going and figuring out how, all the creases if you want. But those are essentials. And that was some cylinders, some circles. These are all cylinders or circles. Cylinders, a square. And then same thing. I'm going to go in afterwards. Ink it. Do, do, do. 
Notice I'm not being too concerned about getting exactly where my pencil lines are. That's just me. I already keep my pencils pretty loose. And I tend to aim for very messy to begin with. So I'm not overly concerned about sticking with my pencil lines. It would be different if I was doing a very specific structural drawing, like trying to exactly replicate the uh, Eiffel Tower or something, then I would be more concerned. I would also do it more, sometimes I like drawing out sign language with hands specifically, then I might be a little bit more concerned about following my line. But even then, there's always room for error. Very quick. I didn't do this with Ossel, but after I've inked it, and assuming you guys ink it, you can go in and just erase all the lines you don't want. And it looks all nice and clean. That's my favorite part, is erasing. So oh, nice, so clean. Voila! Alright, so now we've drawn a few things, we've learned our shapes, we've drawn some hands, we've drawn a character. Now what do we do? How, do we, how does this relate to comics? Well, I'm glad you asked. Normally, when I teach comics, I teach first and foremost how to do a three panel comic. And you can do three panels vertical, you can do three panels horizontal. It's really the same. But we start with three panels because it very easily translates into the three parts of a story. What are the three parts of a story? Yay! So when we're writing a story, or drawing a story, or telling a story, whatever your story medium is, parts of it are always going to be the same. We're always going to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, in our simplest terms. Um, a small piece of paper. I can get more technical about this. If we are drawing a, a graph of our story over time, this is time, or like pages, or panels, or episodes, or whatever, however you want to break down segments of your story. What we usually want, this is not exclusively true, but we usually want something like, um, oh, I suppose I should do the other axis. This is tension or action. So normally we want at the beginning, um, we sort of find out what's going on. It's usually not a whole lot happening yet, but we want to rise up to a point where the climax will happen. And then sometimes we get a little bit of a denouement. And so at the start of our story, start. We usually learn things like who our characters are, where the story is taking place, um, 
maybe what's motivating our characters. In the middle, it can be anything in here, really. We're learning um, stuff happens. Stuff happens. In our simplest terms. Um, we really want exciting things to happen, though, so it's like um, a problem happens. So uh, we have some pirates, and they're out on the sea, and that that's the start of our story. And then what happens? They find a treasure map, and then they need to go on an adventure, and there's a storm, and they lose the map, and then they need to figure out the rest of the journey by memory. And then we get to the end, and they finally get to the island, and they open up the treasure chest, and there's a note and said that the treasure was friendship the whole time. That's going to be my story. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, I've committed to a pirate story. I've been reading a lot of One Piece lately. You can blame it on that. I don't know if... Maybe I can. Let's see. So our first panel, find our characters. We learn what's happening. We're going to do pirates. So let's draw some water. We're going to draw a pirate ship. <laughs> Should put uh, add a little shark down here. I guess it could just be a shark fin, actually. and a life ring just because I don't know why I have drawn a decent number of ships oh oh, oh thank you geek tech I'm gonna pretend I don't know who you are and that we're strangers Uh, Geek Tech is also known as my peanut gallery, or my husband, who's just on the other computer monitor. <laughs> He's very upset with me that I gave it away. Anyway, we need a cylinder for a mast, which comes up out of the panel. See a bit of the sail. Some of the rigging. I'm doing this very quickly now. You might see that. Someone at the helm. There's going to be rails there. See some rails here. Going to need a lot more ropes. Probably not enough ropes. Portholes. Look at this guy, fancy hat. Yeah, fancy enough. Um, I only have three panels, so. say this person is being all like land ahoy 
Prepare. Prepare for trouble. No. <laughs> Prepare for treasure. And I have that. Excellent. Excellent. Ah. Maybe some clouds, though. All right. So, first panel. I don't know if you guys see that. Let's raise it up a bit. There's a ship. This person being all like, Land ahoy! Prepare for treasure! There's a shark! <laughs> there's, a, there's a shark and a puppy in, in a life ring. Just for reasons. All right, and so they spot land next. We need to see them onshore. So we'll draw a bit of a beach. We'll see the ship in the background. Smaller now. At any point, you can go back and add more details. I'm gonna have a little bit of a rowboat here. And maybe we left a bag behind in the rowboat. What else? I'm gonna have our two people. Uh, probably not that big. Where is? Oh, there's my pencil sharpener. Draw our people. It's an easy open pose. Looking at a map. Is his head tilted? Uh, this guy's gonna wear a bandana. Got a bit of stubble. Oops, been on a ship all this time. Draw him some fancy pirate clothes. Doesn't like fancy pirate clothes. Kind of a belt. There's a sword, but it's mostly behind him. He's gonna have swashbuckler's boots. They need to be 
creasy. There's a buckle on the bottom. And loose pants with like patches in, patches in his legs. Some lazy fold lines. Another patch, another patch, and maybe we should make this map look a little more raggedy. What else? What else? We need our captain. Also gonna just have a nice easy open pose. Hands on his hips. Cause he's all like, ha ha! You'll notice that even though I have shown you guys how to draw decent hands, I'm not overly concerned about it. It's about providing just enough detail to get the message across that you want. Really, art is just a metaphor. And storytelling is all about using metaphors to get your point across. Goofy hat. I'm gonna stick a feather in it just because. Got the tiny nose. Excited eyes. Big mouth. Oh, we should have a pirate earring. Pirate earrings as opposed to regular earrings. And yeah, we'll give him some Jack Sparrow dreads or something. And fancy jacket. Gonna be double breasted just because. Again, with a sword. It's gonna have a little more sensible boots. Still with buckles, though. Regular pants, no patches, because he's the captain. He's got to look sharp. And then he's going to be all like... Ha ha! Where to next? James... Speech balloon. Really crooked speech balloon, but that's okay. Mistakes are a part of art. And James, because that's apparently this guy's name, is gonna be all like, uh, through the fourth. There we go. I'll bring that up for you guys. You guys can kind of see. I got two characters on the shore now. A little rowboat. And we can still see the ship in the background. And 
then you know, I have one more panel to wrap this up. So it would end with them finding the treasure. I've already said it's going to be in a forest. So let's do... Let's do an X marks the spot. And with a treasure chest on top of it. Just X marks the spot with a sign. I see any cylinder for that sign. There's a rectangular cube. Erase the part we don't want. Say the treasure is inside you all along with a heart. I'm going to need to add a bit of a background. Some trees. Bushes. It's a really roughed in stuff. Big leafy things. Need some more trees. Um, snake. Vines. Just go crazy with it. And I'm going to have two pirates. Um, maybe I should draw them before I got into all the background stuff. Have to race a little bit. I'll have our captain, his tiny nose, being like upset. With his floofy hat. I'll like, oh, I need to erase a little bit. Ah, uh, what the? Well, we're not going to end that sentence because he's just upset. I should finish drawing him too. Need to do hunched shoulders. And I should have the other pirate sitting. That's on his waistline, so I guess the other pirate should be. I don't want to worry about that. It's going to be kind of sad. Hair coming out. 
Got all this stubble. Make sure I give them an appropriate number of fingers because I'm so used to just doing three. I'm getting this felt again. And we go home now. There we go. Pure comic. I suppose I could add some more detail in this guy really quick. Doop, 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 doop. This fancy jacket. Alright, let's give him a sword. More sensible boots. All right, let me bring this up. So you can kind of see we've got our two pirates and their end destination and their disappointment. And that's how I ended that. Very simple. Three panels. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's more or less how I do it. You you know your basic shapes. So we'll do a really quick overview. Uh, let's let's not use more paper. We got our basic shapes. Where are they? <laughs> our cubes, uh, spheres, cylinders, cones. You can put them together to make characters, however complex or simple you want them to be. Um, you can also you do it to do your complex hand things. Do not dis get discouraged about hands. Please, there's so many artists who can't draw hands, myself included. Just know that this is a metaphor for hands, and most people will look at it and be like, yeah, that looks like a hand, sort of. And that's all we need to know. <laughs> and then we take all of that drawing stuff and we put it into a comic. And we're trying to do beginning, middle, and end. So I came up with this goofy little, very simple three panel one. Where we're starting off on a ship, they they find land, they get onto land, and they're looking at the at the, the treasure map, and then they get to the treasure, and it's nothing because the treasure was inside you all along, and the treasure is learning how to draw comics, <laughs> and and yeah, yeah, let's switch back over that one. Transition. So thank you guys. Um, that is what I normally teach in my first day uh, doing comics classes with kids. Normally ages 6 to, to 13, but really all ages. This is the first things you need to know. If you can do a comic in three panels, you can do a comic in one panel, you can do a comic in 50 pages. Um, it's all just about 
taking that information and compressing it or stretching it as you want and practicing those skills. Just practice, practice, practice. It's just like everything else. Um, it is a learnable skill. Don't let people tell you that it is um, a talent that you are born with because that is almost never true of any <laughs> creative endeavor. You can always learn. It doesn't matter your age. And that's all I have for you. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I will endeavor to come back next week. I might be switching to YouTube. Um, if not, I will probably at least be posting these videos on YouTube. Um, stay safe out there. I am doing these videos because of the current situation in our world and I can't make it out to my normal job sites. So I'm hoping to share this information here virtually because virtually we can all come together. And yeah, yeah. Wash your hands. Have a good day. Bye.